One full minute of logos, including this final TSG logo that shows Odysseus impressing Penelope by shooting an arrow through 12 axes, even though the real impressive part of that story was supposed to be that he could even string that bow in the first place. This movie is taking storytelling shortcuts already. Space reading. I didn't think the lingering belabored glory shots of moving through outer space could get any more pretentious, but then you had to go and add literacy to the mix. Taking as settled the very influx science related to space's infinite or finite state. Alien planets where human evolution and beaches and gravity and weather all seem the same as Earth. But the rocks there are like, f it, we're gonna form like waves for some reason. Say they're tripling your salary, which is how we can afford to treat her. Having a civilization that's figured out long distance space travel, but still struggles with healthcare. It's two years. I won't be here. I know, but when you get back, she will. She will not. Your thumbs are perfect, you're just blowing too hard. This hand-whistling tutorial goes on for all the sum blowing. Also, I'm super glad the movie is setting up this loving family backstory. It will come in handy later when the movie has the heartfelt reunion and we have something to feel good about, right? This is you. <laughs> Belittling your very sick daughter. And I know it's because of me. No, it's not because of you, it's for you. Meaningless semantic distinctions. Unexpected meteor activity detected. It's always the f***ing meteors, isn't it? Look, if you've figured out space travel but haven't solved how to protect yourself from unexpected meteors, you haven't figured out space travel. Also, how hard is it to design a ship that senses meteors, does a quick about phase, and travels away from the meteors until a better route can be found? Emergency landing. On this here life-sustaining planet that just happens to be conveniently within landing distance. Movie feels the need to remind us that Mills has a daughter back home, even though we just spent what felt like two hours with her trying to hand whistle. Are you scared? No. Am I supposed to be? I could honestly use some instruction on how emotions work at this point. Carelessly tossing medical supplies all over the place in an emergency situation. Show some chill, spaceship driver. Also, why would the bandages be unpackaged in a drawer like this? Does the company want you to get an infection? How could this creature possibly know when Mills is not facing it? Is one of the creature's evolutionary abilities dramatic timing? These bodies were in cryo containers and released from the ship before it crash landed. There's no logical reason for them to now be positioned this close to the ship, except for this movie to pretend like it's scary. Confirm nine escape pods have been destroyed and two are missing. You only had 11 escape pods? The Titanic was more prepared than this long range mission. This is Charter 3703, long range exploratory mission. An asteroid debris field hit my ship. All passengers are dead, no reason for recovery. Mills records this because he plans on ending his own life, but then has a vision of his daughter and quickly decides against it. And yet we don't see him immediately do a follow-up message being like, so, um, actually I'm alive and you can go ahead and send help. And also maybe send some love to my little girl. She's a hand whistler now. I'm super proud. Also, I'm really starting to wonder when we're actually going to get to the parts of this film with Mark McGuire. This is a movie about the 65 home runs Mark McGuire hit in 1999, right? Why else would you call it a 65? Remember when we went to the beach? A while ago. Yes, we all remember. It's the only scene we've seen you in. Movie takes another swing at some backstory, but forgets to actually take a different swing at some backstory. Also, Interstellar easily became the grand champion of any scene dealing with space travelers watching old videos of their loved ones, and every movie that has done it afterward pales in comparison. 65 is definitely not an exception. <laughs> the best way to get something to open in a sci-fi movie is to shoot it with a gun cliche. What the hell? We're just now doing the title card? We're already 20% of the way into the movie. That's basically the same percentage in that the title drops in Drive My Car. Does this movie think it's Drive My Car? Making your title screen confusing and making me think this movie is now called 65 million years ago a visitor crash landed on Earth, which would be a win for the Englishman who went up a hill and came down a mountain because it would no longer be the most long windiest movie title ever. Somewhere the claps of Christopher Monger can be heard. Also spoiling your movie's concept in the title screen while simultaneously making the movie somehow feel like its own trailer. 20 seconds of landscape porn. Where are you? Duh, Naveen. The title card just said Earth. Can you do not read? Maybe a little more time in the classroom and a little less time hand whistling would do you some good. Sleeping in this uniform. Mills was going to be gone for two years. Surely he brought a change of clothes. Location unknown. Where are you? Get it? The spooky vision of his daughter said, where are you? And now he said, where are you? And it's awesome because those are the same three words in the same order. At least 70% of this movie so far is Adam Driver broodingly walking around prehistoric Earth. And honestly, it may have been 100% because I've probably been sleeping about 30% of the time. Ah, sudden Chekhov's all faithful. This geyser-assisted spotting of a small part of his ship that is almost 10 miles away is all the movie bullshit. Distance to escape vessel, 15 kilometers. Oh sure, you just happen to speak English on this faraway planet, but then you use absolute nonsense made up distance measurements. I see how it is.
Mills is looking out over a steep drop-off, so was this creature running up the goddamn side of a mountain? <laughs> this asshole asaur has delivered two jump scares in the span of 30 seconds. You gotta shoot it in the head, Mills. They always come back. Have you never seen a slasher film, Mills? If you would just watch Prom Night, you would see, Mills, that there's a very simple formula! If Koa is so scared of Mills, why did she spend her first waking hours tracking him across the entirety of the late Cretaceous period? There might be more dead dinosaurs in this movie than live ones, and that feels like a problem. Two of them can clearly tell there is something rather large coming towards them and choose to waste three or four seconds of just standing still instead of running. What's your name? Mills will shortly find out that Koa doesn't speak English, and I'm trying to figure out how this wasn't figured out on their walk back to the ship. Is this the first time Mills has actually spoken to her? And I must be Koa. So help me if he starts teaching her to hand whistle right now, I'll give back all the sins. No, I don't understand. I, I can't translate. My translator's broken. Conveniently. Wasting this entire box of red powder stuff when you might need it for red powder things later. Family. Yeah, on the top of the mountain. Telling a lie to a child, then they don't even speak your language and can't even understand you. You're a parent, Mills. You should know that the joy of lying to children is that they do understand you and you can still get away with it. Also, you be nice to her. She's in the mega hit movie Barbie, where she owns Barbie with a toy Gen Z speech. And then the movie promptly completely forgets about her. She's been through enough without your disrespect. Koa immediately finds and plays the video card for Mills' daughter, just in case the audience hadn't quite caught on yet to the blatant metaphorical parallel between them. There's just a little minor problem going on with... Me, so. Koa so perfectly finds the exact videos that the audience needs to know what's going on with Naveen that I'm slapping it with a hefty news from home's position sin. Quiet. Quiet. And move. Move. Excitement? I understand that Koa doesn't speak English, but she should understand the idea of distance and know that she needs to jump off the log as opposed to stepping off the log in this manner. All right, let's go. Movie decides to have its only two characters be a dour father who lost a daughter and a dour child who lost her parents, but also asks the question, what if they couldn't speak the same language just to really f*** any chance whatsoever for character chemistry or moments of joy? Kids. Don't eat. Oh sure, you still have a working handheld poison detector. Was it produced by Chekhov Industries, perchance? They're basically a sponsoring partner of the movie at this point. <laughs> movie insinuates that prehistoric bugs were composed of 97% rubber cement and 3% forced comic relief failure. Thinking this will help your hand get cleaner and less sticky. Scene does not contain Kate Blanchett directing an orchestra like a haunted maniac. <laughs> <laughs> Movie gives a big old prehistoric middle finger to its audience. Now that's some unintentional comic relief. You have to listen to me. You better start understanding English right now, young lady, or you're grounded. Oh good, his wound is festering. Because they had the technology for insta-sealing wounds, but apparently forgot to invent antibiotics. It seems a little dangerous that the container you drink water from either is or looks a lot like the container where you can detect poison. I generally try and keep my poisons and my waters separate. Also, is Mills just now offering Koa water? What the f*** Mills? We're filling up! Thinking that Koa would even understand this. And why does she have to fill it up? She got like two drops out of it. Clearly Mills drank the majority of it. He should be filling it up. Look, you know it's Earth and I know it's Earth, but they don't know it's Earth and they should be avoiding touching all the things. Oh. Jeez, movie, we saw that only seven minutes ago. We get it already. You're doing a setup payoff thing. No need to kick us in the berries with it. Mills doesn't feel these giant insects on his hand until he can see them. <laughs> Stealing plot devices from Lethal Weapon 2. Really excited to see the scene where Mills is sitting on an outdoor toilet with a bomb strapped to it. Or maybe when he finds his dead girlfriend tied up at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, I'm done. Diplomatic immunity! Okay, I'm really done. For a movie about Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs, there's been very little of Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. All five of these fake-ass dinosaurs not only wait for him to tell her to... Run! But none of them immediately give chase of the smaller, weaker animal fleeing, so instead they can focus on attacking the stronger animal one by one. This kind of action has to be like the butterfly effect times a million. Just think of all the shit Mills and Koa probably changed about the future of Earth with all their f***ing around in the past. That would also have made for a more interesting movie. Alfred Hitchcock's The Terribly Designed and Poorly Rendered Prehistoric Birds. I swear these dinos went to the Michael Myers school of walking slowly toward the thing you want to kill. Graduation ceremony there takes forever. <laughs> Deus Ex Milkina. Wasting three bullets to scare away an animal that was already in full retreat mode. Move. All right. We'll wait. He's waiting? Is he waiting? There's no waiting in Dino World! Ha ha ha!
<laughs> He's teaching her to hand whistle. Is this movie serious? This is a parody, right? Am I being punked right now? They're in freaking Death Jungle Central and he's doing whistling lessons? What the f*** is this movie? Also, yes, I know I said I'd give back all the sins if this happened earlier, but that was half an hour ago and I still can't believe the movie is making hand whistling a central plot point. So now I'm giving even more sins for you making me explain my reasoning. Also, also, take it from a hand whistling expert, Adam Driver's technique here is in no way producing an actual whistle anyway. The thumbs are too spaced out and he's blowing under the knuckles instead of through them. I will not stand for this hand whistling disrespect. Oh, then we're safe now, you can sleep. Movie asks us to believe these seven glow sticks are protection against large predators. Home is out there. Mills gets the urge to show Koa home right at the same moment the movie needs a ticking clock introduced in the form of a killer asteroid. Irregularity detected. The studio's concerns about the tone of this script somehow made their way into the movie. Cool shot, but why on earth did Naveen set up this hologram recording session to record her playing from behind? And don't tell me it looks like it's in front of you from every angle because the movie included this shot to make you sound like an idiot. She didn't suffer, she just, she just slipped away. We already knew this happened without the blatant flash back. This movie trusts the audience about as much as I trust Disney to focus on creating original entertainment. Oh look, a bug that has evolved to be a perfect parasite for a host species that won't exist on the planet for millions of years. That's how evolution works, right? Movie admits these seven glow sticks were just proximity alarms that would in no way protect these two enough for them to even consider going to sleep. Lightning crashes. Lord Dino cries. Scanning for alternate path. This movie is 6.5% futuristic Google Maps telling our main characters which way to go. Also, I'm not even sure why they're looking for an alternate path since these dinosaurs have seemed about as threatening as the main cast of the sitcom Dinosaurs. But our Rusum Tusum was just in there. Why would a predator have perfect camouflage and use it to let its prey advance to the next room instead of pounce? Using her hands to try and feel the air current when your machine had a full map of it just 60 seconds ago. I can't move the mountain. Being fresh out of mustard seeds. These grenades seem way too easy to activate to store in a flimsy fabric bag. No! No. Thinking that a hand whistle would be louder and more distinguishable than just yelling like a normal human being who didn't have a hand whistle fetish would. That cave-in felt like such a huge obstacle to overcome, but Koa is already outside and safe barely a minute later. Because such a crazy situation these two characters are put in, this movie finds a way to lack any real stakes. This movie is feeling a lot less Jurassic Park and a lot more The Descent right about now, but it's nowhere near as interesting or suspenseful. I'd rather just be watching a double feature of those films. Ooh, that's cool. I wonder if you can play Daedric on that. Still better than most Marvel movie fight scenes. Catastrophic asteroid detected. Living in a time before Bruce Willis had put together a ragtag mining crew. Also, why did this story have to be set around the time the asteroid wiped out the dinosaurs? Dinosaurs roamed the Earth for millions of years, but this is the only part of that time period that most dinosaur stories want to focus on, and it's annoying. <laughs> Using all your weapons against one small dinosaur. Also, how did Koa know this would even work? Mills showed her you had to arm the bombs first, which she did not do. Koa! Artex! I'm willing to suspend so much disbelief to make a sci-fi movie work, but there is no amount of suspension that can hold this holotech creating this clear rendering with that amount of sand gunk on the lens. I barely brush my thumb against my phone camera and everything looks like I used a filter called Milky Discharge Diffusion. Oh. I don't care if you're trying to communicate with someone that speaks a different language. Talking in the third person is talking in the third person in all languages and you're getting a sin, Koa. <laughs> Good job. I think you mean bullshit. You're telling me in less than 30 seconds she did all this? I don't even know where some of these rope trails go. The good thing is that Mill's ship runs on the power of whatever the story needs it to, gasoline. The rescue bus is coming. Life support is working. Navigational system's good. Listing all the things that had to conveniently go perfectly for this finale to get pulled off. Also, did you check the translator? Since everything else is working, you might want to see if you can go ahead and talk to Koa about her dead parents. Family! Family! Family. You knew parts of her language this whole time and you're just now trying to communicate with her, you dick? This is my daughter. Uh, last time I saw her, she was mad at me. Making someone else's trauma about you. You understand? I understand the words. Skip! All will be fine now. You will be my new daughter and I will be your new father. I saw this movie with a similar situation called Face Off and it seemed to work out okay there. Just when everything is finally going right, one last obstacle appears for our hero's cliche. I honestly forgot there were dinosaurs in this movie. Also, I haven't even been paying enough attention to know if the movie has indicated how this gun just happened to be here outside of the ship that just fell off a huge mountain, but I don't care. 
Even if they gave a reason, their reason is f***ing dumb. It just took me some time. This holographic projector is able to work perfectly from this distance, handheld, through the window, and also transmits sound at a distance because the movie needs to flaunt Chekhov's hand whistle for the millionth time. Speaking of how hard this movie Chekhov's, the problem with foreshadowing the audience's brains out is that they can't help but remember things. Like that there's still a dino tooth with a poisonberry glaze amuse bouche out there that hasn't been served up. So even after Kylo finishes off these two T-Rexes, there's still no suspense about another baddie showing up or I won't meet its end. <laughs> One shot from that gun took down a fucking T-Rex? <laughs> Vessel orientation restored. Of course it is. You see, the zoom on the eye is so you remember it's the same creature from earlier because apparently hell hath no fury like a dino is scorned. Using the Princess Bride R.U.S. strategy 65 million years before Wesley didn't believe they existed. Why are the f non-existent dinosaur they want us to think this is? <laughs> Told you so. Impact imminent. Impact imminent. Impact imminent. Repeating something three times that we heard clearly the first time. Life on Earth survives this. So help me God, if there's a stowaway dinosaur on this spaceship, what am I talking about? That would be awesome. Here's a sin for not having a fucking stowaway dinosaur on the ship, ass movie. I guess it's true what they say, life's a beach, and then you crash land on a developing planet with giant monsters and have to transfer a young girl to safety, but it's her that saves your life so you don't die. Such great wisdom. You just put your lips together and blow. And if you see anybody coming, whistle. I can't whistle. I can't hear you. You're trailing off. And did I catch a niner in there? Were you calling from a walkie-talkie? Remember when we went to the beach a while ago and... Remember how just cold it was? Remember that? That was awesome. And that must be cold. Lilu Dallas Multipass. This is a drawing by John Lennon. The little dromaeosaurs must work together if they are to take on big prey. A lucky escape. The column reforms and continues its journey. Ah, it's a flower. Uh-huh, it's pretty. You're such a dick! Every day I wake up and I hope you're dead!